on the continent to support good public policy. Please put your minds to this problem. It's alive today. My second example has to do with a very specific one in my country, the cleanup of the fuel subsidy regime in 2012 during my second stint as finance minister. Nigeria has a fiscally challenging fuel subsidy regime. The country exports crude oil and imports most of its refined needs because its refineries are in very bad shape and provides a subsidy for the sales of refined oil at the pump. At the end of 2011, a total of 1.73 trillion Naira, US $11 billion equivalent, was submitted as claims for subsidies by 143 marketers who were importing the product. These numbers seemed horrendously large compared to what I had last seen when I was in government in 2006, which was closer to $2 billion in subsidy. So we decided to audit these claims. We audited about $8.4 billion worth of claims, and we found $2.5 billion worth of fraud in these claims, i.e., many of these marketers were trying to claim $2.5 billion fraudulently. With the full backing of the president and the economic team, we decided that we were not going to entertain these claims or to pay. The pressure from the affected marketers was tremendous as we tried not, to say, not only to say we would not pay, but also we would clean up the whole mechanism for the subsidy claims and put in place something more transparent, something clearer. This did not go down well with them. When we stuck to our position of non-payment and implementation of the new verification regime, these strong and well-connected vested interests were angered and seemed to blame me personally for this. There were personal consequences. My 83-year-old mother, a retired professor of sociology, was kidnapped by four young men and held for five days. Keeping her wits about her as she was totally terrified, she asked them why she had been kidnapped. And they told her, quote, because your daughter, the finance minister, refused to pay oil marketers their dues. The kidnappers negotiating with my brother demanded my resignation publicly. They, I should go on television publicly and announce my resignation and depart from the country as a condition for my mother's release. Needless to say, these were some of the worst days of my life. Imagine when you are in position, you want your parents, all of whom are here to, with you today and your relatives to be proud of you. You want to be a source of good for your family. You can imagine how I felt sitting there and thinking just because of trying to do something right, to implement a good bit of policy that was good for the country, this could lead to the taking of my mother's life. These were some of the worst days of my life. With my father's support, the firm resolve of the president, we all decided I should not give in to the blackmailers, and I refused to resign. Following a manhunt, I'm sorry, I still feel emotional when I talk about it. And this story is not really publicly known, so this is probably the first time I'm giving the full details. Following a manhunt for my mother by police and security agencies, she was able to make a dramatic escape after five days in captivity where she had only been given water and half of a sausage roll. So here was a well-justified cleanup and reform of a policy, but implemented in a dangerous reform environment where the losers in the reform, well-entrenched vested interests decided to fight back to derail implementation. The decision not to resign was a very difficult and risky one. 
as it turned out, it worked. But there are days I ask myself, on my down days, what if it hadn't? What if they had gone ahead and murdered my mother as she overheard them planning to do with one of their handlers on the phone? Could I have justified trading off firmness on policy and standing up to blackmailers, implementing a good piece of public policy for my mother's life? What decision would you have made? Faculty, what decision would you have made? I know that one other brave hero, a woman I admire so much, a brave activist and reformer, Aung San Suu Kyi, was faced with an equally terrible decision. Leave Myanmar to be with her dying husband in England. I'm sure you all know the story. 